Welcome to Lake and Bethel. My name is Sherwin Branson. I'm the pastor here of the church that values authenticity over hype. Today we're going to talk about encouragement. Before we get into that, I want to tell you a story, something I learned when I was living in Oklahoma many years ago. You know, the Okies, as they call themselves, have their own kind of language. It's a different sort of language where you have to learn how to speak it in order to get along, especially if you're in the delivery business, which I was. And uh, I know one of the first jobs I had, one of my co-workers said to me, now hand me them plars. And I thought, what in the world is a plars? I couldn't figure it out. And then finally he pointed to them and I said, oh, you mean pliers? Yes, I can hand that to you. And uh, the same guy, he got frustrated one day and he said, you guys don't do your job better. I'm going to whoop you upside the head with a tar tool. Uh, what in the world is a tar tool? Is that something that you level the tar on a road with or something? But a tar tool is a tire tool. And I didn't know that. But my favorite one was, yeah, I went to Walmart last night. Well, I tell you what, that place is so crowded, you can't hardly swing a dead cat without hitting somebody. I thought, you know, that's, that's a really unique one. But then I had a, another boss who liked to kind of give pep rallies at least once a week in the morning. And nobody's in the mood to listen to a pep rally in the morning, but uh, he did this. and He was really quite encouraging. And, but they would make fun of him a little bit. And one old boy said to me one time, you know, if he keeps that, I'm going to be, feel like I can achieve anything. Why, I could even stand on my head and spit nickels. And I had never heard of that expression before, but apparently that happens when you get really encouraged. But you know, realistic encouragement is always a good thing. It's never something that is bad. I need to be encouraged from time to time. You need to be encouraged from time to time because life does get rough. That's just the way things work, especially right now trying to make plans of what you're going to do even the rest of today, trying to make plans of what you're going to be doing next week or a year from now. We don't know when this thing is going to end. Everything seems to be lacking in stability. So encouragement then is one of the best gifts that we can give. And here's the kicker. We all have the ability to encourage someone. And we can all see the need for encouragement. And even if you can't see the need, the need is there. A few weeks back, I, I talked about this book. About the, it's a book for kids called, Have You Filled a Bucket Today? And it's a little book that is so true. What the author did was took the, some of the basic teachings of Jesus and put them in secular words. They could be used in public schools. And it works really well. It's the whole premise behind it is you fill someone's bucket with a compliment or a kindness. And in doing so, your own bucket gets filled. And it's really a good thing to practice. You know, one of the things about this pandemic is we're learning and being reminded of what's really important in our lives. And one of the most basic human needs, whether there's a pandemic or whether everything is just going extremely well, is encouragement. We need to focus on what is important. Jesus said the most important things are to love God and to love your neighbor. And maybe there's that and more things that we need to learn as we go through this pandemic. Now, one guy that I was talking to this week, I was telling him, you know, maybe this is part of our education because this life is a training ground for the next one. It's, it's a time of testing. And he said, well, you know, I think I'm ready to graduate from all that. And I said, well, graduation is what happens when we move on to the next life. And we're not quite ready for that yet. I firmly believe that God has a mission for me and God has a mission for you. And one of those missions is to be an encourager. It's a simple thing, a simple thing that we can all do. 
We can all make someone else's life better with encouraging words, encouraging deeds. And the kickback, as the author of this little book says, is that we become encouraged as we are the encouragers. Now there's a fellow that's mentioned a few times in the New Testament by the name of Barnabas. And the first we hear of him is in Acts chapter 4 in the New Testament. It says that he sold a piece of land and gave the money to this struggling church in Jerusalem because the first generation of Christians in Jerusalem were all very poor people. And he sold the, some property and gave them a big financial boost. Now his given name was Joseph, but they nicknamed him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. And if you were referred to as the son of something, it meant you were like that. When Jesus is referred to as the son of God, it's the same thing as saying he is God. That's just how the Hebrew idioms worked in those days. And he, he did encourage. Many times his name pops up in situations of, where encouragement is needed. You remember what Paul did, how when he started out, he was, he was crucifying Christians. He had them stoned to death. He had Christians arrested. He was the most militant anti-Christian person from Jerusalem that for, during those early days of the church. When he came back to Jerusalem, changed after he had met Jesus, it was hard for those early Christians to accept him. Barnabas was there encouraging them to accept this changed Paul. The church in Antioch, just a few chapters down in Acts chapter 11, was struggling and struggling. There pops in Barnabas and encourages this fledgling church in Antioch. There was a disagreement that Barnabas had with Paul that was quite severe. This young man by the name of John Mark had accompanied Paul on several of his journeys as he was out spreading the gospel, planting new churches. And at one point, John Mark, who later went on to write the gospel of Mark, deserted Paul. And then he wanted to come with him again sometime later. Paul would have nothing to do with it. And he and Barnabas got into an argument and eventually, this is recorded in Acts 15, eventually they split up. Barnabas and Mark went one way and Paul went another way with someone else. Now this disagreement was not permanent. And you can imagine that Barnabas encouraged Paul later. And as Paul was in his old age, as he writes in the second letter to Timothy, he says, send Mark to me, he'll be of great help. Uh, so Barnabas likely encouraged them to work together. He had this ability to encourage, just like you and I have this ability to encourage. And as I look out over this huge crowd this morning, I see many of you who have encouraged me in many ways. So you, I know it comes naturally for you and I'm sure you encourage others too. There's some Bible verses I want us to take a look at that deal with encouragement. The first one of those as is written on the back of your bulletins is from 1 Thessalonians. It says very simply, so encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Now that is the exact opposite of what TV news does for us. I uh, watched a documentary movie this week or last week about a uh, news executive who actually got one of the more recent news channels going. And uh, he was quoted in that show trying to describe what made a good news story. And he said, it's good news, it'll sell well if it has two criteria. One is that it makes your grandmother cry, and two, that it makes your grandfather angry. If it does those two things, it's good television. And uh, it worked. His news stuff became the number one station for a while. And it didn't take long where all the other news channels went the same way. Those programs are designed not to encourage, but to elicit negative feelings of fear and anger. 
just the opposite of what Jesus calls us to do. So turn your news off. Jesus tells us to encourage faith and forgiveness, to encourage and build each other up. Hebrews chapter 3 has another one, a good one. It says this, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. See, this hardening of the heart is something we need to fight all the time because it's so easy for us to become jaded and cynical as we go through this life. We're called to turn from being angry pessimists to grateful optimists. It's a movement that God wants to see in all of our lives. So let's be deliberate encouragers in everything that we do. A little, few chapters on in Hebrews, in chapter 10, it says this, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. Now he says to spur one another on. And that's obviously a horse metaphor. You've all seen spurs uh, on movies where the, you know, the cowboys have them on the back of their boots. Well, I, uh, I was on a horse's back probably every day for at least since from the time I was in junior high to the time I graduated from high school because we fed a lot of cattle and the horses were considered a tool for taking care of cattle and also we rode just for fun. And I never needed spurs because the horses that I had were what they call green broke. Uh, we just had to train them ourselves and that was kind of a interesting thing too. But all I ever had to do was let go of the reins and lean forward and that horse would take off. But what the spurs do, they don't hurt the horse, but they just kind of send the horse a, it's, it's like a tap. It says, come on now, move. And they do. That's what the writer of Hebrews is saying to us here. Spur each other on toward love and good deeds. Encourage each other to be encouragers. To love, not the world's way of hate, not the world's way of competition, but to love. To push for good deeds and to not worry about what someone else is doing or saying. Your job is to put in the good. Your job is to encourage. He talks about meeting together and not making that optional. Well, that's, that's a good thing. And that's why we've made these services 45 minutes, so that, especially during this uh, crisis, so that you can bring kids in. And most kids can make it for 45 minutes, so I want to encourage you to do that. But encouragement is part of meeting together. It's an important part of why we come together. Just like learning and honoring God with our presence is an important thing. I got another story I got to tell you here. But this is, uh, this is John's dog and me. And uh, that particular day we were walking on the pier. And uh, it's interesting when you got a 110 pound dog a Rottweiler, how many people will voluntarily social distance? They just move right out of your way. And I, a few of them, I said, no, you know, I, I was afraid they were going to fall in the water. And I said things like, don't worry, I've already fed him. He's not going to bite you. Things like that. Well, what was so interesting is uh, shortly after that, I took him to the house. And my home office is right by the front door. And he likes to lay down there and, <coughs> excuse me, because there's a window there. And he can look out and announce to me whenever somebody walks by. He likes to, especially if they're walking by with another dog, he likes to let me know that they're there. But that particular day, he must have been really tired because he was just sacked out on the floor, not paying attention to anybody that walked by. He's almost snoring. I could, I could almost hear him snore. And the FedEx guy came by, set a package by the front door, not three feet from where the dog was sleeping, and then he stood there and entered stuff in that little doohickey he's got in his hand. Well, that was about the point where the dog woke up and noticed this guy standing on his porch. He didn't like it. That dog rarely barks, but he barked then, and all the little hairs on his back were standing up, 
And he was having a fit. And my response to it was, oh, you're a good puppy. It's OK. And as soon as I said that, the hairs dropped down on his back. He started wagging that little stub tail. And everything was OK. He just needed that little word of encouragement. And it changed his whole demeanor. I think he was about to have that FedEx guy for lunch if I'd opened the door. But that little bit of encouragement changed everything for him. And you and I can be that encourager for people. We can encourage in such simple ways. Now, I've come up with three ways today, and this is by no means an exhaustive list. This is just designed to get you thinking about it. But one of those ways, and there's a place to write this in your bulletins, is to communicate your prayers. That means to just pray for people and then let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you're thinking of them. Years back, the Regional Synod of the Great Lakes would send me an email every four or five weeks, just a quick email saying, we prayed for you and your church today. Uh, seems like a silly thing, but it was extremely encouraging. They stopped doing it because they had to lay people off. But uh, while they were doing it, it meant a lot to me. Another one is to give someone a sincere compliment. Give someone a compliment who seems down in the dumps. You can find a way to compliment anybody. So do that. It fills their bucket. And then the third one is coffee. I had to make three C's and coffee sounded real. Have coffee with them. Hang out. Let them talk. Ask them if there's anything you can do to help. Anything you can do to make their life less miserable. And then do it. It's really quite a simple thing. Everyone has opportunities in this world to make this world a better place. We all have a chance to do that. So bring in some encouragement. Encourage people. You might make a life changing difference. You might save a life with your encouragement. Plus, it is commanded by Jesus. He wants you to be an encourager. And if you don't, you're going to miss the chance to make a huge difference in someone's life. You might even may miss a chance to save their lives. So let's be the encouragers our Savior and our friend calls us to be. Let's receive the Lord's benediction. And now, in whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus, all the while giving thanks through him to God the Father. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Well, as always, uh, thanks for listening. And uh, next week, the title is The Goal for Your Soul. So be here. And if you can't be here, tune in. And we will have that online for you. Thanks for listening.